go record button before I forget. It's my uh, one responsibility. I got one job. <laughs> so, uh, Jason, you're going to read me questions? Yeah. So Jason will be monitoring the chat room for me. Um, I'll be monitoring those that come in and out yeah. and just make sure that um, uh, it, I'm, I've got everybody on mute so that we're good to go. But uh, I'm going to put myself on mute and uh, turn off my camera for a little bit. Um, and the show is yours, sir. So take it away, Tony. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. We have um, with me, we have Wayne Volkart, who has been running our repair station and managing our repair station for 20, 20, 21. 21 years um, and has grown up his whole entire life as a painter. Uh, he managed a pretty impressive uh, paint shop at Featherlight Graphics back before they put everything on with stickers. Uh, so every one of the NASCAR haulers during their prime years of the Earnhardts and the Petties and uh, Jeff Gordon's yeah, Sterling, and Marlon, all, those, like, Sterling, all, those guys. all those guys, he painted every one of those trailers. So he can use anything from a airbrush to a pressure fed gun and painting 20 gallons of clear to whack on those trailers. So uh, we're glad to have him here. But the biggest reason we're on this today is because now that people maybe do have a little bit of time on their hands, more than they usually do, we're hearing more questions about tearing down spray guns and doing a proper clean or a proper rebuild. Um, we're gonna talk about a couple things first and then we're gonna let the master get to work. Um, we do have um, a YouTube channel that is, if you go to YouTube and open up YouTube and you do a search that says SADA by Dan Am, you'll get a page that looks like this. So now what's cool about this is you can look at the top of the page, there's a search bar. And right now it says SADA by Dan Am. If you type that in, but right after those words, if you just type in cleaning a X gun, um, if you click on that and hit enter, it'll pull up a list of videos like this. And you can see the very top one that says hand cleaning your SADA Jet X and other SADA guns. When you have a moment, take time to watch that because it's a very quick video um, that, that shows you the proper way to to care for that spray gun. Um, you can change that word at the top to cleaning an X-Gun to just grease. Uh, Wayne's gonna show you where to put uh, the sod of grease on your spray gun to make it last longer. And you type in grease and hit enter, um, and you don't get John Travolta. You get uh, one that says how to properly clean or how to properly grease your sod of spray gun. And it pulls up a video that's fairly short, but it really gives you good details. Now what's great about this, we have also included today a PDF, a brochure that she will pull up that has a link to all of the maintenance cleaning kits, all the brushes you can see there, uh, gun grease, all of the maintenance sets, everything that we have that, uh, and these, what's cool about these maintenance sets, is there a slimmed down version of a maintenance kit or of a repair kit? So it's really just what you need to, to repair one spray gun. And so Wayne's gonna go through that, he's gonna show you the parts that are in it, and he's gonna replace them all in a spray gun to show you exactly what's needed. Um, so we have a couple different cleaning sets on the backup page, if she can scroll back to that. Um, we've got a new wrench we're gonna show you. We have the Sada grease. We have a, a repair kit or a cleaning kit, sorry, that comes in this tube that's got a mixture of brushes and things that he's gonna use. But what's nice about that, you're gonna to need to replace those individual components. Some you're gonna use more, some you're gonna use less. Sada has those Sada cleaning brooches, which he's gonna show you that he uses. They're an outstanding little tool for cleaning those tiny little air holes in an air cap. They are a flexible, thin blade that you can turn and use to cut those tiny little holes open if they have clear coat or paint in them. But what's nice about it is they don't change the shape of the holes. And in the repair station, I don't know how many times he gets, you get uh, air caps in that we know Sada spent a great deal of care and time to get down to a two micron tolerance and then they come in and they've used the eighth inch drill bit to clean their welding tip, cleaner. or welding tip cleaners. So you can get all of those pieces individually in here or in small packs. So you can get the brush and brooches. You can get just the cleaning brooches. You can buy just the dual ended white brushes. You can buy just the general purpose brush that comes with every pack all there. So she'll have this later. What's nice is the recording of this will be put online and she'll release a link to it so you can watch this again later and have all of those uh, items available to you. So a couple things. Well, we're gonna start today, the guns we're gonna clean are clean guns. Wayne's got a pretty good example here of one that we received in a while back that, uh, if you hold that out a little closer, 
uh, to the camera. I don't know how many of you have one that looks looks more like uh, more like this one, but uh, we get guns in here that look like this, all the way out to some that just need some basics uh, of cleaning. But what we need to make sure that we understand is cleaning a spray gun today is a little different than it's been in the years past because cleaning a gun today, we're, we're, we're dealing with paint that is different chemicals. I mean, in the past, we weren't dealing with waterborne. We weren't dealing with VOC issues that were giving us uh, solvents like acetone and oxol that are in all of these low VOC products. Uh, the hard part with acetone and oxol is acetone is a cleaner or a chemical that uh, makes everything brittle and shrinks it. So when you look at packings and seals and, and things like that, it shrinks everything, makes it harder and more brittle so that it breaks easier. Oxol is the opposite of that. It swells up those gaskets and springs and seals. So somewhere in between you get things that are brittle and then they swell and they get brittle and they break. So we're seeing that happen more often. Uh, it means that we have to take better care, clean better with our equipment than we ever have. Um, we need, there's a couple simple things and I'll have Wayne grab that's off camera over there. Uh, having a cleaning bottle that works. It, buy your waste barrel. Having one like this, um, this thing is nice. It's got a sealable lid. We've had this bottle in our back in our paint uh, area for about five years. Yeah. Um, and they hold up. Their list price on one's like 13 bucks. Uh, and it holds up. Holds, water or solvent. Yeah, you can use our water solvent and it holds a, a full liter of, of cleaning agent. Wayne's got something over here. It's a, this one happens to be stainless. They don't need to be stainless, but they get, get yourself a little bin, uh, a cleaning tin. Uh, they can be um, a cake pan for that matter. You get something with a lid that you can clean your parts and pieces because if you work over the top of this and you drop a part, you can find it. It's in there. Yep. Um, they're not, they don't, you know, they don't change shape with solvent, et cetera. And they don't fall into the 55 gallon barrels <laughs> yeah, that's and disappear. Pretty, yeah. The other thing that we have is we've got some padding on our counter here. Obviously, these are low load, but if you can find something to pad that with, even I don't care if you use sound deadener for that matter, but get a, get pig mat or something like that to put on your workbench. Uh, any of that kind of stuff really helps to when you're cleaning a gun or when you're working on a gun and you drop a part or piece, you don't damage it. So yeah. those are some of the things that in advance we want to talk about. Um, but the other thing is, to Wayne's right, he's got a blowgun, and that blowgun is also a lot more necessary and it could be this side of blowgun. The nice thing about this one is it's our noiseless blowgun. It's super quiet. Um, it it's, uh, works great. But whatever blowgun you have, use that for blowing your parts dry when you're putting it back in your gun. Uh, somebody a long time ago decided that keeping your guns wet overnight or over the weekend or over whatever is a great idea. And that might have been okay back in the 60s when packings were made out of leather. But it definitely isn't that way anymore. Um, clean your guns blow them dry at the end of the day, um, and hang them up. And he's going to go through a process using some sort of grease, and that's on that page that I showed you earlier. But it's something he's going to show you where to put that. Uh, if you have that grease and you use proper brushes and a blow gun, your spray guns are going to last a lot longer. So for now, I, I want to make sure that you guys, um, we're going to zoom in a little bit on Wayne here, and we're going to make sure uh, he's going to go through a complete rebuild on this. On this gun, and we, when you are buying a rebuild kit, there's a difference between a rebuild kit and what we're calling a maintenance set. Yeah. The old rebuild kits came with everything. You could fix sometimes two or three guns that had a trigger two in there. It had effects, a lot of things that you might not need. So what we've done is lowered the amount of stuff that's in there down to just what you need in a maintenance set. Uh, in this maintenance set, it's a hell of a lot less money. You're buying the whole kit for about six dollars more than you could you used to be able to buy just the air, air yeah. piston packing assembly set. So it's economically priced. Um, it's a great kit. So I really want to turn it over now to Wayne and let him start. He's going to use the Jet 5000 as the example. Um, whether he's doing a 4000 or a 5000 or a 3000, it's the same primer type guns. of repair. Uh, primer gun would be the exact same. Uh, same. Assembly and assembly yeah. and, and disassembly. Yeah. So we'll show that to you. And he's going to talk a little bit about the X gun at the very end uh, and how important things are with the X gun. There's a seal in there that's in all the other guns too that he's going to talk about. So turn it over to Wayne and we'll let him uh, describe what, if you're taking your gun apart and you're taking this down to do a nice uh, yeah, maintenance good. set in it, how to make that thing work like new again, here's how to do it. Thanks, Tony. 
I'll say, so we're going to be working with the 5,000 RP, like Tony mentioned. And as far as internal springs, packings, and seals, they're all going to be the same as the 4,000 or 3,000, even down to the primer gun. There's a little bit of differences with the X guns, but, but not a lot. Um, <clears throat> when we get the guns in, we, we usually do an estimate on them. We'll call the customer. They okay it, authorize it, and we start on it. Um, when we do them here, we tear everything down out of the spray gun. It goes down to the, ba the bare body. And then we clean it and rejuvenate it and then bring back, you know, maintenance sets and stuff like that are installed in the guns. And we do spray test every gun before it leaves. Um, we don't generally spray with materials other than water. Um, the water will give us a pretty good indication of what the patterns are going to look like. We can kind of go off of that if we need to. We can actually take the spray gun into the booth and put some material in it and see how it handles that too. So. That's kind of a convenient place to have. We have a nice booth here for doing that. Um, when you're tearing down, when you're basically tearing down the gun to, to clean it or to put a maintenance set in, obviously we want to get our air caps off. We want to get our uh, needle out of the back of the gun right away. So it doesn't, because that comes in contact with your fluid tip and if you're, you start spinning your fluid tip off and you don't have the needle out or if you don't have it triggered, it can damage both of those sets. Um, I'm going to use the newer tool that we have we have out now. It works on uh, the big guns and the mini jet, and actually has a little slot in it so you can tune the horns on the air cap itself. So now that we've got those pieces out, I'm going to take the fluid tip out, get that on the bench with the other parts. Um, next, I would do the uh, trigger assembly, and you got to be kind of careful when you take the C-clips off of the triggers because they like to fly everywhere. We call those the Jesus clip because you're always going, Jesus, where did it go? When it flies out of your hands. But, okay, so as soon as you poke those out, you've got the trigger off. It's gonna expose your trigger pin itself. So we're gonna pull that out, keeping all these parts where they need to be. And then the T-wrench the tool that comes with the guns pretty much does everything you need it to do. So the one end goes into the, the trigger packing itself. You can actually spin that back around and back this packing out of there. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's when the trigger pin itself goes through a very critical packing to keep uh, clean and lubricated. Okay, so then I like to pull off pull out the air micrometer next because that's going to let us get inside of here, there is a spring and another pack and that will come. The spring doesn't come in the maintenance set, but you can probably use the one that came with it. Otherwise the 240 packing is in there and that's no problem. Nice thing about having that out now, when we take our T-wrench, we can fit that in the backside all the way into the needle packing, which is in there. And we don't have the micrometer in our way to hit when we're doing this. So then you put the wrench on, spin that back out, keeping it upright. And all three pieces of your system, your needle packing service set would come out with it. Um, sometimes the needle packing itself will stick in there. And if that's the case, if you look on the tool itself, there's some threads that are a little ways down in here. What you can do is you stick that back in there, turn it a little bit, and that will allow you to pull the packing out. It'll be stuck right here. So that's an easy way to get that out of there. The biggest thing is you want to make sure you have that out because sometimes that doesn't come out with uh, when you're yeah. on assembly. And if you don't have that packing, you try to shove another one in there, it obviously is not going to work. Yeah, that what will happen is you'll get the other one in there. You have to force it real hard, but your needle is not going to go back through that gun body. So that's pretty good indication of it. If you can't push that needle back through, that you probably didn't get the packing out of there. So you may have to go back in again and try and get it out. Sometimes you might even possibly have to wait until you, after you've cleaned the gun a little bit, get that lubricated with the materials that are in there and that'll loosen that up. So then we take the air distribution ring out and with the gun comes a, a tool to do that. Something there. There's one in the maintenance kit also, so that's nice to have. So when you order the kit, if you don't have the tool anymore, at least you'll still have the tool. It's got two little hooks on each side of it. I prefer just to use the one side. You put it in the distribution ring, 
turn that turn. distribution ring so we can see it. So you can see it right there. Yeah. Then hook that a little bit. Then just bring it close to you and pull that out. <laughs> and that's usually what's going to happen. It's either going to more than likely it's going to break, which we're going to replace anyways when we when we put it back in. And your lineup pegs will be gone. So now that we've got that out, needle packing's out, trigger pin packing's out, micrometer's out. La the uh, last thing to do is the fan control. And again, we go back to the T wrench with the Torx bit on it. And we're just gonna back this out till it comes off of there. See if I can get it with the rest of my finger here or not. There's a little bit of blue lead thread lock on some of them. So sometimes they come off a little bit hard, but once that's off, take the fan control knob out itself. And then you're gonna go back to your tool that comes with the gun also, the, what is that, one old, I can't think of the number right offhand anyways, but it has a 14. It has, actually has your other um, holes for different uh, things on the gun too. But then as long as you've got everything else off, you can get this, this wrench on the side of that fan control much easier. You don't have anything in the way to, to have to uh, put it sideways or something and, and possibly damage the gun body itself. And that's a 14 that we use on there. So then you back that out of there. And there's on the back of that, there's gonna be an O-ring which will come in the maintenance set that you would replace. So there we've got it. Would it take us a couple minutes? I've got everything out of this gun. There's nothing left in it. No packings, no seals. It's ready to be cleaned with the, the maintenance set. Um, you're gonna get all the additional brushes. I could say the biggest one here is one that we're gonna stick up into the air passage. You know, run it up in there and clean that out. With, with cleaning, proper with cleaning proper, yep. properly stuff. And then uh, that one also works inside the air micrometer area to clean that out. And then it would you also work in your fl uh, fluid control to clear there. And then, the next one is going to be the, the smaller brush, like this one here, and that's the one that we use in our air passages. And you can simply get at them in the front. Um, there's two of them down on the bottom of the gun that bring the air to the cap assembly, obviously. That brush works good in there. And then in the set also comes, a, uh, there's two different ones of the brushes. One's a really big one. I don't know if you can see that. And one's, a, one's much smaller, so you can use either one of them. To clean with and if you could flip flop them if you wanted to but that'll that'll let you get into these pass or these these areas on the gun body itself you can actually get down into their needle packing area you can get down in here where your fluid control is in your, in where their air micrometer would go there's uh numerous places to, to use to clean those and stuff but each time that you're cleaning a port like that you run a brush using cleaning solution whatever you're using make sure you rinse it afterwards uh, each time use a, use a flush, you know, solvent or whatever you're doing to rinse out because you probably just knock something loose. Right, and, and that and, and that's where doing it, doing it that way, make sure, yeah, obviously we wanna keep these clean and, and each time we put them in there so we're not putting more dirt back into the gun body itself. Um, basically right there, it's down. Now we can clean everything on that with all those brushes and stuff that so comes with a nice white one to scrub the body itself with. Um, they come with, a real nice uh, double-ended little white brush set like this and where that comes in handy is it's going to be on your fluid tips um, there's a little brush end here where we can come in on the back side of your fluid tip and get all these little holes cleaned out and we can also use that one on the up in the fluid tip area to clean there that up there the white brushes are a great little brush um, the air cap itself, if you're using a 3,000, 4,000, or 5,000, those still have the old snap ring on them. Hey, Wayne, a quick question that's come in. Yeah. Uh, that T-wrench you've been using, is that available for purchase either on its own or is it part of a kit? It's on its own and in a kit. Yeah, it comes in every gun. Yeah, they come with every gun that you get. There's a little tool pack in the gun. In, in the gun there, there's going to be this tool and the, and the small brush. There's going to be what we call the ID tags that go on the bottom here. So if you've got two guys that have the same gun and one, they want to be able to tell them apart, you would color put a different system. color. Yeah, the color code okay. system on the, on the Is bottom. that available? If someone's lost that, is that available for replacement? Yes. Okay. 
those those come in a uh, pack of either like a green, a blue, a red, and a black, I believe. All four come in the packet. So then once you've got the, the, the snap ring off of the cap itself, you've got two pieces in your hand. Um, the brass piece, as far as cleaning on this, again, we can use the double-ended white brush with the small one to get into the horns that are the side, the side horns for the air there. And then the other nice thing, and, and we were talking earlier about these brooch sets that come with them. And these are available, they, they come in the maintenance kit, or not the maintenance kit, but the, the cleaning kit. And they're also available in a 12 pack, which is right here. And that, like Tony was saying on these, what's nice is they're, they're flat. These, these pieces that come out that you're gonna use to clean your air cap holes itself with, going in like that, they're flat. So they don't, they'll actually clean in there instead of, you know, you having to slide it around and everything, but they're flat. If you spin them, you'll actually see the flat sides on it. So they're, they're very good for cleaning out the air cap holes. The little tiny ones that are on your side horns here. The thing about them is you want to make sure if it starts to get bad and you've shortened it and, and whatnot, obviously replace it and use one of the other ones, but never take it and go up as far as the area on the shank itself that's not the flat part but instead is, is more rounded. Because if you stick that in there, um, you're gonna distort the holes and you're gonna have pattern issues. Um, it's very critical that those holes stay the size they are and that they stay open and clean because you've got one side partially plugged and the other side you're gonna get a pattern that wants to flip this way or that way and, and um, it causes those pattern issues. Um, the other thing in the air cap ring itself now, the last thing is there's a seal in there, and I, I know I get a lot of calls on these seals. There's two sides to the seal. I want to show that one. It's one. Yeah. Drink two. All right, so on this seal, you'll see, I'm trying to find that. You can see that, but it's a, a little bit. There's tapered. a flat side, a flat side there's and a, a tapered side. Flat side and a, yeah, the tapered side is towards you right now. So when he's describing that, he'll describe the flat side or the tapered side, so you know what way to put it in. Right, so the, the, the flat side itself you want to put in going towards the front of the gun or towards the horns that are in the air cap. The tapered side would then go towards the body because when you screw your air cap on, it, it flares it out and goes over the gun body. If you've got it in there backwards, what's gonna happen is it's gonna bind and if you keep turning it, you're going to destroy the seal. So it's very critical that the flat side goes forward, tapered side goes towards the back. So there we've got pretty much everything down and cleaned. So we're ready to reassemble. So then depending on your maintenance set, if it's a 4,000, 5,000 or what, um, all those parts that you're going to need are going to be right back inside that set. So um, to reassemble, like I said, we're gonna need uh, the spring that was in your packing area, and we're gonna need the spring that was in your fluid control. Those two are available separately if you break one or whatever. We just don't put them in the maintenance set, but you'll need them again. So then on the end of the, the, the spring itself is your trigger pin um, packing itself. I call it, it looks like a little hollow point bullet. It's kind of clear. And that the actual trigger pin goes into that when it's inside the gun. So when you actuate the trigger, it pushes the pin in, lets air go through the handle. Okay, so the trigger pins actually come in the maintenance sets too, which is kind of nice. So if you uh, lose one or whatever, you'll have that as an extra one. Um, what I like to do when I'm, re when I'm going back to putting it back together is if you take the sat of grease and, oh, I got that, got another one. What you can do is squeeze a little bit of that grease onto the pack, onto the trigger pin itself, and then put it right into the back side of that packing. So now it's done in there and it's stuck in there. So we can um, take that assembly then and put it back into the gun as is with the new one itself. Screw it in as far as you can with your fingers or whatever, and then go back to the T wrench. 
get it tight, just snug it up. You don't have to get great crazy and, and try and strip it right out of there. And then if you come in from the backside itself with the same tool, you can put it on the very backside of that trigger pin and just give it a little bit of a bump, uh, push and she'll come right out the front. So then we can take the 240 and the, the, the spring itself, stick that in there. And we take our, our air micrometer itself. And I like to put, every once in a while, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of grease on the uh, packing, that the, the seal that's on the actual micrometer itself. So you just, just a little dab, it doesn't need to be a lot, just a little. The grease lasts a long time. So then when you, when, it, when you put this back in, you're gonna notice on the air micrometer itself, there's a, a fairly large size hole on one part of it. That hole is what lets air into the gun as you turn it. So that hole has gotta be on the bottom. Put it back in, hold on to it with your finger so it doesn't fly out of there because there's some, there's some tension on that spring. Stick a, a air micrometer a set pin back in. Here again, we're just gonna screw it back in till we're snug, doesn't have to get crazy, do it that way. Then the fan control itself, we'll take the O-ring that's in the repair kit, maintenance set, and then we'll, we'll walk that down onto the fan control assembly. So it'll sit down in there pretty nice. And you just wanna put that in by hand, tighten it down, and we're gonna take our 14 again before we get the triggers and all that stuff back on. Spin that around till it's snug and you're good to go. Take your uh, fan control knob itself that you've cleaned off and everything, get that back on. Our little set screw on the side. Kind of small, hard to hang on to, Tony. Get that started on. that spun down here. We put a lot of threads on there, so you gotta bear with me. We'll get it down on there. Just snug that up again too, and then make sure once you've got it in there that it opens and shuts real nice. You don't have anything binding. Uh, and that's done. Okay, so we're gonna take our tool again. And we're gonna take the needle packing service set parts out of the maintenance kit. And like I said, there's three. You've got your nut, you've got your spring, and then you've got your Teflon packing. And that too is tapered. So the taper would go towards the gun body to seal it up inside there. We'll put those pieces on. Make sure you get it so it's started nice. It should go in there real, real easy and straight. You don't want to cross thread it or anything. Screw that baby in there. Tighten it down just so it's nice and snug. And we can take our, our air distribution ring now on it. All the guns, there's, there's little lineup pegs on these distribution rings and each gun has kind of a different assembly. The 5,000 has two pegs. 4,000 is just one, but it's gray. 3,000 same way and the 2,000 are the same way too. You'll notice on the bodies that the air passages are gonna be on the bottom. The line of poles for your pegs are gonna be on top. Don't try and put it in one or the other or you won't get any air through the passage. Well, let me show them that line on the front of this. Yep, yep. So on the very front side of an air distribution ring. That's the part you would be looking at. There's a little mark that goes up at 12 o'clock. So just make sure that mark is on 12 o'clock before you press this in. Yep. So then we can just take that and uh, visibly line up the two pegs into those two holes. Simply just push it in, it's in there, good to go. So we've got everything else there in now. We can pop on the trigger from the side. As you like to do the top pin first because that holds it there for us. Um, get that down and in. Take the C-clips again. Get them started. I used to, I, I keep a little flathead screwdriver on hand. Um, most mechanics keep them, stuff like that. They work good for pushing those clips on and off too. And then the, the lower trigger pin itself is the one that the needle is going to go through. And if you look on them, 
On the newer guns now, they actually put a notch on that pin and there's an area on the trigger itself that is also notched. So when you put it in there, simply line up that notched area and then it'll pop right in. That way every time you go to put your needle back into the back side of the gun, that, that hole that the, tr the needle goes through is already lined up for you. You don't have to try and take your needle and, and move it around a little bit. Yeah, they call it the index that pin. Yep, and that it's, it's made it a lot easier and you don't have to worry about using your needle to try and move it around. So now you're putting the Jesus clip back on. Yep, so we've got all those back on, trigger it, make sure everything's functioning really well. I'd like to put a little bit of grease too on the outside of this. So when you put a little on your fluid control knob itself to redo that, and then we'll also put just a little bit of that, just a little ways back on the needle. If you notice right like where the taper comes to an end, I put it just a little bit beyond that. And that way when you stick your needle in from the back, it will lubricate that trigger packing or the needle packing itself. Um, on the back side of the fluid tip, you're gonna notice that there's a little, little white clear type uh, packing or seal that's on the back of that side. That seal is pretty critical. Um, really critical in the X5500s. Um, it seals and keeps the paint from going into your threads and, and it's a lot easier to clean that way. Um, what it does also do is help seal the gun itself. If, this, if that particular seal gets bad um, and the different products like Tony talked about react differently to it, I've seen that seal get really brittle and dry and shrink and it'll actually fall right out of the fluid tip. Um, We've seen them swell and, and distort, but it's something you're going to change periodically um, as you go through the cleaning process of the gun. Well, I think something to add, that seal has been on every gun that we've had for the last 16 years. Yeah, I and mean, we've, really we've used not, it forever. We haven't gone through a lot. It's on our pressure feed gun, it's on our primer gun, it's on all of our guns, we've had that seal. Well, it was always used as a secondary seal so that you didn't get paint up into the threads of your fluid tip if you had a slightly light, loose fluid tip. Yep. Well, now when we went to that X gun, and he'll show that again later, it's more critical because we eliminated that air distribution ring that he showed you. And right now, the gun he's working on now, the 5000, has an air distribution ring that the fluid tip seats cleanly against. And it has that seal in the back of the fluid tip as a secondary seal. Well, you don't need to use uh, brute force to tighten these tips. Yes. Yep. So when he puts this in, I want you to pay special attention to how he tightens this, because it does not mean that you need to stand on the end of a, of a steel pipe <laughs> to put yeah. this in, because yeah. you, you start crushing the distribution ring, but you also crush that seal the at the rear of the fluid seal, tip. Yeah. And once you've crushed that, it doesn't come back. Nope. So once you've crushed it, now you have to tighten your tip even tighter and tighter, and it just, it's a losing game. Yep. So- And you can damage. You so can watch carefully, damage and the reason that we have this, this new black wrench the one he's showing you is made out of plastic. And the reason that we did that was because people were using that steel wrench and tightening it far too tight. Yep. And then what happens is you're crushing the seals and now you end up crushing the distribution ring and then you end up uh, having a gun that acts like the fluid tips loose so you just yes, keep spires. tightening it more and more. Yep. And it just spirals out of control. So with this one, if you have a tip that is either glued in because it's got paint in the back of it, you've never taken it out, or you've got, uh, you're trying to over tighten. A uh, good example is we have another wrench here and it's the one I've been using as an example. I used one and I over tightened uh, a fluid tip and it, and it damages the right. So if you put it on with that side against the gun, other way, there you go. Now it slips. So it'll slip past and uh, I've already damaged the wrench. But if wow. you turn it over now, it's cool, it's two-sided. If you turn it over, you can use that to go ahead and tighten it. But it's a lot easier to damage a $5 wrench than it is a $325 nozzle set. Yeah. So that's the big reason. So this wrench, watch how he, watch how much he tightens it. So Sorry. literally, you're moving that thing just a fraction. So let me loosen it back up. So if I take this, and I'm not gonna get as close because I guess if I get too close, it gets blurry. Okay. But if I take this wrench and put it on here, hopefully right here is a good place to see. Yeah, I'm gonna start right, yeah, we'll go right here. So you can see the angle of that wrench. Literally, if I do this, I barely snug that. So I mean, I've got it tight, 
So it's tight, but I'm not over wrenching it. And so that's, that's important. And that wrench helps to save that fluid tip because what we see a lot is guns that come in here for repair. And if you're using a wrench like the one we have or something else, Something you're, else, they start probably. slipping and rounding off that fluid tip. Now it changes the way air flows across that fluid tip because that fluid tip and that air cap work together. And the air going across that is important. And you've got, uh, when you ruin that, number one, you can't tighten it again or you can't loosen it again. And you start getting big metal knurls across there. Plus, if you slip with that steel wrench, you whack the fluid tip across the tip of it. And we see so many fluid tips that come in where the hole's not round anymore, it's D-shaped. Yeah. And people wondering why they don't have a straight fan. Well, take a look at that before you send it to us and hold that thing up to light. And if that opening is not round and it's not clean and it's D-shaped, that's probably where your issue is. Uh, you've smashed that fluid tip, whether you dropped it because it fell on the floor or you slipped with a wrench yeah. and damaged it. So the plastic wrench helps to prevent that. Yeah, it works really well. You can open up your paint cans and stuff with it also. Uh, the last thing that we've got to do on the gun, Tony, is to install our air cap ring seal itself. So when we talked about that with a flat side in towards the cap and then the beveled side towards the How did the you back. take the old one out? Well, a lot of times what'll happen is that that itself with the products of today can yeah. shrink and swell. Um, so if it shrinks, a lot of times then they'll fall out of there and, and they'll have an air leak over their cap assembly or something, you know, and they call and they don't realize there was even a seal in it. So once the seal's installed, then we can drop our horns back in. I'll show them how you put the seal in it. They couldn't see that. Do you want me to do one? Yeah, I think, was, I think we should do one. Okay, well, I'll pop one out of there. And yeah, what are you using, just a demo uh, hook? Or a I just, yeah, you, in the maintenance set, that's where the, there is a little tool in there that's got a little bevel to it. This, uh, in that, yeah, right. this, there's a little tool in there so you can hook it and pull it out of there. And then once, you, once you've got it out or you're ready to install a new one, if you look down inside it, just at the very bottom of the threads, but not all the way to the front of the cap, there's a little recessed area that just seal is gonna go into. Put the taper forward. The, no, the taper towards the body. Oh, okay, earlier you said towards the air no. cap. No. Okay, towards the body. The tapered, tapered side towards okay. the body okay. right. and the flat side towards the air cap. Okay. But so, so once it's, you, you find that recessed area in there, what you do is you just go inside there and just everybody, they call and they say, oh, it's way too big, it won't go down in there. Just walk it down in with your finger and that way you won't wreck it getting it down in there and I'm having a tough time with it my finger or you can come back in you can also use that picker uh, the little screwdriver just give it a little extra nudge and we're down in okay so just remember the taper towards the gun body yep okay. that way it flares out when you okay. screw the cap back on so once that's in there then we can drop our horns down in take the c-clip Pop that back in, and there's a, also an area that that fits in. The cap should spin, and that should hold it from falling back out the back side. So then we yeah. pop our air cap on like that, and then we can take the tool that has a, the straightening side, and you can actually align your horns up so everything is straight across. Last now, now, the nice thing about that, what Wayne just did is on this with that ring, there's a different ring, obviously, for different sized air caps. Yep. So a 4,000 versus a 5,000 versus a primer gun, whatever. There's different rings. Yep, there's but different in, that, in the correct maintenance set, now he's got two different ones here. He's got one that was a 5,000. He's got one that was an X gun. Um, the X gun does not have an air distribution ring. Yep. Um, but when we move to that X gun, that outside snap ring yeah, I was going to show that too. We is do. eliminated. So yeah. that let makes me, that simpler. Let so me pop this up. back in. So we've right. got a little lubrication on our needle. We're going to slide that back in our spring. A little bit of SATA grease right there. Start to screw it in. I'm going to have a tough time here. I'm shaking. <laughs> That's because you're on okay, overtime. Yeah, I'm on overtime. <laughs> once, it's, once it's started, then, then I usually set my gun or if I'm spraying, I'll trigger it back. I'll screw this in until we just start to hit and feel that trigger tension on it. We're going to stop right there. We're going to spin the lock nut down. 
and ready to fly. Now the nice thing is the way he did that and where he put that grease on that needle and where it goes through the packing, on that air piston uh, behind the trigger. Which is down in here. Yep. And then also on the fluid threads and then on that spring that's in the rear of the fluid threads. And while you have that air micrometer apart, he showed you how to grease that 240 yep. packing. But also put a little grease on that spring. If you put that grease on those locations, that gun is going to last you You don't so need long. a lot. We, just a little bit. It, right. the, the grease hangs on for a long time. So, you know, a tube like this would last you would last quite a while unless you had right. multiple, multiple guns and you're using But still, even with that, yeah. if you did that grease portion just on the air piston assembly and on the springs and on the uh, needle where it goes through the packing, if you did that once a week, your gun's going to last more. And we'll tell you once a week, so you try and do it once a month. I think that's... Well, yeah, I mean, I think at the end of every day that you're done painting, the last yeah. thing you're going to do is going to be probably take that nozzle set out, clean it, um, blow everything dry, right. lubricate it then, and then put it back together. You know, then it's it's good to go the next time you pick it up. That's, that's the best way. Yep. The other thing is, I know we get a lot of questions on enclosed gun washers. And enclosed gun washers can be a good thing for convenience and for speed, et cetera. But what you gotta remember is that enclosed gun washer is not a storage cabinet. Yes. And it's because we'll go in several shops and hey, I'm having an issue with my spray gun and we go call on them. They walk in and well, where's your gun? Well, and you go over and it's in the, laying in the bottom of a gun washer that's been there for who knows how many hours, who knows how many days. And exposed to the, the vapors and we solvents. We need to make sure that you're getting those out of there. When that timer rings, uh, get that thing out of there. Uh, even if it, okay, let's say you put it one in a gun washer and you go paint another car. When you come back in that mixing room, pull your gun out of there because those fumes inside of there are brutal. And we all remember the days when we had the aluminum cups on our guns and we had those red lids that went in the top. If you left those red lids in there, they'd swell up like a Frisbee. Yep. Well, your packages are trying to do that same thing today with the chemicals we use. Um, I would just, uh, I wouldn't, I would just not leave your stuff in there. And if you're cleaning it with an enclosed gun washer, make sure that gun washer also has a air connection air to, to yep. keep air blowing through it. Leave your air cap on your spray gun when you put it in that enclosed washer. Uh, if you watch some of the stuff we've done, we've got several videos out there with using a, a gun washer. Go we'll watch those, but leave your air cap on. Everybody got the misnomer that that extra jet in that air or in that gun washer is for putting your air cap on it on the other one and it's yep. not because when you take a look at the front of that spray gun when you pull that air cap off and you shine in that towards the camera you look there that fluid tip has those holes and he showed you earlier those two air passages at the bottom if you pull your air cap off in a gun washer you've only got one jet blowing through the fluid passage but you've got about eight of them aiming right at the front of that gun trying to fill the whole thing with whatever color thinner is in your gun washer yep. and it's really hard on things um, so don't don't, just leave your air cap on when you're going to do that. If you're going to give a pre-rinse of your gun before you throw it in the gun washer, yes, take your air cap off for that. Use your squeeze bottle and rinse your gun out. But always hold, this one another example, always hold this gun. Grab me that squeeze bottle. Nope. Nope. If I'm going to rinse this, and I've got thinner in this, so I'm going to be careful here. <laughs> but if you hold that and you pull that trigger, rinse your gun with a gun at this angle. Because if I rinse that gun at that angle, uh, all of the everything that's going in that fluid patch is going to run out of that gun and go down here into the whatever catch can or whatever you're using. Yep. But if you're doing it this way or you're using a brush that jets at this thing from the front, you're going to fill those air passages all the way to the base and completely fill all of those so that you they uh, they get gummed up or they get dirty. So just leave, give your gun a pre-rinse, rinse it with an air cap end of the gun aimed down and then put your air cap back on and throw it in the gun washer because the gun washer is there to clean not only the inside of that fluid passage but it's also there to clean off all the overspray that got on the outside of your air cap when you were painting so those are important things the thing that happens if you leave your air cap on when you're given that pre-rinse is everything that goes through that fluid tip by the time you get to the end of that fluid stream it dribbles down to the inside of your air cap and that's the only way you're getting paint inside your air cap. Yeah, and it gets back in your air passages. It gets inside your air cap. And you look at your air caps. If your air caps, when you pull them off, are brass and shiny, you're doing it right. If you pull your air cap off and it's black, <laughs> it's because you've left it soaking overnight in the cup because you thought you needed to keep them wet. 
or you have left them wet so long that the thinner or acetone or cleaner, whatever you're using is tarnishing that brass. And when you start tarnishing that brass, now air can't flow across it as clean and you can't, um, it doesn't get the airflow it needs to go properly through that air cap. So leave the air cap on in an enclosed gun washer, take it off when you're rinsing your gun and blow it dry. And you put that stuff away at the end of the day, your spray guns are gonna last a long time. So now I think he'll pull the uh, Jet X5500 and show you just how, what it looks like behind that fluid tip because we do not have a air distribution ring there anymore in that, in that gun. Yep. That's really the only difference between a 5000 and an X gun as far as mate, general maintenance. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna pull the needle out, take the air cap off. The nice thing about the X guns now too is they yep. don't have the big C clip on the yep. Just pop it in with your fingers like that and you've got it out. Um, not to worry about the snap ring, so that's there. So then when we take the wrench and we loosen our fluid tip up, you'll notice that those are completely designed differently now too because the our air distribution ring that we used to have is now designed right into the nozzle sets and into the body. So now that I've got that out there, you'll notice that there's no black ring in there. No, flu no air distribution ring anymore. Like I said, it's now designed into the sets and in the body itself. We still have the air passages in the bottom. And obviously we don't have the recessed holes to, put the, uh, to line up our distribution rings. So much easier to keep clean, uh, uh, simpler as far as cleaning itself with the brushes and, and passages itself. And then the fluid tip seals the same as like Tony said, we've had on the 100 primer guns. We've had them on every gun. So I think they're sold in a five pack. Um, so you can just use them on each one of, the, each one of your guns. As far as putting that on, I think we should maybe show them how to quick do that on the fluid tip seals. <coughs> if I can get one, get a good one off, because I don't have a bad one. And they're, they're on there good and tight, but once it's off, then you can clean all that stuff in the back, they're really good too. And then just to simply take the one that's in your maintenance set, you see that there's a beveled side to this too, and there's the two rings that are on the back. The bevel side has to go into the fluid tip itself. So then once you've got that in there, just press on the tabletop. Yeah, just put it on the tabletop. It might not be as good here on this foam one. Do you hear it snap? And it's already in there. That simple. If you move it, it won't move or nothing. It'll be nice and snug and tight in there. Um, when they get bad, like we were talking. They can dry out or whatever. They'll spin around in there and, and they won't seal it properly either. But once we've got that on, everything else in the X gun is exactly the same as any of the other ones as far as uh, needle packings and, and stuff like that. So then we just take that, that the, the, the new black tool, put it on there like we did the other one and just, you know, get it a good snug and that's that one's on. We can bring our needle into the back just like we did in the other ones, and then our, our control set, trigger it, slide that in, locking nut goes forward. And then when we've got the, the X gun, the air caps itself clean and stuff, we just simply bring it back in, pop it in. The, the, only, the, the only other difference <clears throat> is taking the air micrometer out of an X gun, uh, using the T handle, is it's at an angle for the screw, maybe it's showing that. It doesn't come in at a straight in like we did on some of those other guns. Well, they're all, all on the, the 5,000 and, and the 5,000 X, <coughs> they so come in we, on the bottom side. Yeah, so the difference would be when we look at a primer gun or the mini jets or the, any of the previous guns, that screw for the air micrometer came in from the side. Yep. Same wrench, just and now it comes in at an angle. So we'll get the question many times where people will try to come in at that at a straight angle and they can't get that screw out and then they end up wrecking yep. the screw. Yep. Um, that wrench, fits in here all you have to do is you can go and you can find it it's at a just a little bit of an angle about yep. a 30 percent angle and you can catch that screw and take it out easy but that's i mean wayne has just rebuilt a spray gun uh it's it's there's not that many moving parts it's pretty simple yep <clears throat> but rewatch this later i know i appreciate you guys watching it now but pre-watch it or re-watch this later uh, Kristen will have the links to the pdf with 
this sheet that shows all these components so you know what parts and pieces you need. <coughs> and we'll include a couple links to some of those more common videos that we've done in the past where we're talking about um, how to clean a spray gun or how to uh, grease a spray gun so that you see that. So definitely we appreciate the time um, and having all of you here. Uh, we'll be glad to do more of these in, uh, in the near future. Yeah. Uh, I was sitting here with <laughs> going through my guns going, I got to like replay this. So I'm definitely going to be replaying it. A um, couple quick things to cover while I got both of you there and, and the gun doctor himself as you know, the hospital room there, Wayne, that you run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Grease, you know, I know, I know we use it. It is a, a lubricating for the moving parts of the gun, but is it also sort of a protectant? Does it keep things from going back into passages it shouldn't if we if we use grease for appropriately, or not be afraid well, to use too much? Grease? You know, one of the biggest ones would be, um, you know, like your trigger pin itself. We've done a lot of things to to keep that not getting it. You know, when you're spraying, you don't get a lot of back, you know, air pressure going back around that, but. What'll happen, what can happen is if, if we don't lubricate that pin itself, then the metallics and the paint could build up on that pin. And then as you trigger it, it's just going to prematurely wear that packing itself off. It becomes, so an, it becomes yeah, an abrasive. Yeah, it's like sandpaper on there. So that, that's one reason we keep that a little bit group, uh, lubed up, you know. And so, yeah, it is kind of a protectant. And, and the other thing, we get the question a lot, people want to buy gun oil. Yeah. And the problem with gun oil is gun oil washes immediately off. Yep, it's gone. Where so the grease on. Uh, stays on there longer, you don't have to do it as often. Yep. It's cost effective uh, and it's functional far better than an oil would be. It would just wash off and it ends up with oil, you end up getting, getting the stuff everywhere. You know, well, you and, and then there's guys that use some of these other products that have got, you know, petroleum. Now. I mean, they're, a, they're an actually a, a contaminant, you know, and they, they don't realize that they're actually contaminating what they're painting with you know the spray gun itself right right that's what's you know, this is obviously a non-silicone type grease so we don't have to worry about any of those issues uh tony do y'all happen to have a, the sada cert wall chart in there anywhere yeah but it's bolted to the wall it's way over there <laughs> got it okay so no i just wanted to um i just wanted to talk a little bit about um we have some time, right? I mean, I think we're not production painting the way we used to um, right now for at least a, maybe till the end of the month. So I, I think sometimes we get so caught up in the daily, I, I guess we don't get caught up in the daily cleaning, but how do I know if it's time to rebuild? Do well, I just- I think, I think the biggest thing, number one, we get used to a gun that degrades over time. And so we compensate. If you've got a fan that's a little bit heavy at the top or, Little bit heavy at the bottom maybe you're tilting your gun differently to get that to work um, but with the sauna cert all that is, is it's a big um, graph paper notepad it has a, is a place where you can write hey today I got this new spray gun and the best thing you can do if you buy a new spray gun <clears throat> is shoot a test pattern keep your gun distance set it at six inches from the air cap horns to the to the substrate to the paper whatever you're using and write down what was the air pressure you were at and what viscosity is the paint you just sprayed. So if you're shooting a waterboard and you know you're going to have between 24 and 28 seconds or you're shooting a solvent and you want between 18 and 22, whatever, whatever that number is, write it down that day. What, what solvent did you have in it, et cetera. Okay, now three months from now or a month from now, take that same product and shoot that same test pattern. And when you're seeing changes in your test pattern, Obviously, something is either clean, not clean, or um, it, it, or you've got damage, damage, or you've yep. damaged something. And, yep. and that's the hardest part is nobody wants to hear when they send a gun into us that their nozzle set's jacked up. You know, it's not the news you want to hear because we know they're expensive. But if you've damaged your fluid tip or you've damaged your air cap, and keep in mind that those fluid tip nozzle set air cap, needle, everything worked together is, and when we, when SADA builds those, they have a tolerance, they're down to a, less than two microns, in many cases, even a micron in some of those portions, where they've done so much R&D to try to get those to be the perfect spray fan, and then we as painters, 
go out there and shove all kinds of alternative methods <laughs> through those holes, or we just don't take care of them, we yeah. use solvent that's left in them, and all of that stuff degrades them and they change shape, or we whack them with a wrench, or we drop something. I mean, it all happens. And you gotta buy the whole nozzle set to make sure it's perfect, because you drop a fluid tip and smack it, or you slip with a wrench and damage it, that fluid tip has been tested with the previous air cap, and worn. They and wear, and, you know, they, and they wear. You start wearing. You pull those things a few hundred thousand times, and they wear differently. So you now throw another air cap on, or you throw another fluid tip in, um, or you try to just replace the needle. It isn't going to work. No. I mean, they've all worn themselves to a different tolerance. Yeah. So you replace the whole thing, and that gets expensive when we understand that. So we're trying to teach you how not to cause that damage, like, cause yeah. those issues, and many times it's man-made issues. Um, and we cause them ourselves. And um, so, you know, and there's a ton of painters out there that obviously work hectic schedules, and we get that. But every single one of you, no matter how busy you are, I don't care if you're turning 140 hour weeks, you're turning 180 hour weeks, you're turning 70 hour weeks, I don't care if you're turning 30, you've got time at the end of the day to clean that gun properly. If we just did a quick cleaning method, go watch some of the videos we talked about earlier. It takes about two minutes to clean your gun right. Yeah. And if you do that every day, the next day you're gonna perform perfectly and gonna make you money. If you're not doing that right and you're just letting stuff degrade and you're not taking care of it with the right tools, um, it gets expensive to maintain them and we get that, but you've caused that. And that that is uh, something that I am so glad that we have people here, whether it's myself or Wayne or Jason, uh, who works with us, Gravenhoff, many of you know him, or Jim Kovatic, or Chris Springer. We've got all these people out there that are painters or have painted their whole life. And every single one of us want to make sure that these, this equipment works great. When we go to Sada, Germany, uh, um, they have a technical team that's amazing. They have hands-on painters that are, um, they are, they've gone through to be master painters. And so they build this stuff to last and to work well, and they know what a paint job has to look like. And we understand what you go through with all the varying colors you have and the different viscosities of paint you deal with and the temperature changes that we have here. I mean, here in Minnesota in the last two days, we've had a 50 degree temperature change. And so we get that and we understand that. So we're trying to give you this advice because you can eliminate a lot of variables and you can eliminate a lot of issues that you're causing by yourself. You might not want to hear it, yeah. You don't want to hear that, you, you know, because we always get the thing where the jobber calls us and says, hey, my best shop, this gun's not working. This guy takes great care of his equipment. He, <laughs> oh, he's really good at cleaning it. Uh, he does everything right. He uses all the right brush. And then we get the gun in. That gun tells a story. That gun tells us, you might be the best painter on earth, but you clean like a hack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. And um, that is the truth. The gun tells a story. You know, you get it in and it looks like an Italian candle holder that's got every color paint on it you've ever sprayed or that it's got every color wax that dripped down it. I mean, we get that. Um, and it doesn't mean that you just clean it on the outside. Um, the inside is what's important. So what he just showed you and what we just showed you is really important. And if you can do this and you can pass this on when she shares this video post later, uh, man, do your shop, do your other painters in the shop. Um, that didn't have time today or didn't take the time today to watch this, show this to them. It's a really valuable part that makes you a lot of money and saves right. you a lot of cost. No. Yeah. So just um, see, I got, um, I got like, I got a question that just came in, but I, I do want to do a little summary here. So we'll cover the question that just came in. It basically says, sometimes when I get a gun new out of the box, it doesn't have the nice large fan. Is there something they can do to check the fan pattern without having to send it back to SADA? The best, the, wow, all right, that I would be, I would love to see, but the okay. best thing you can do, we all have an iPhone or a Android, I don't care, shoot a test pattern with it. But what we need to know, number one, what air pressure? Viscosity. The biggest question or biggest issue we're seeing today is people trying to spray too high of air pressure. And if you got too much air pressure, keep in mind when you spray that gun and you pull that trigger and you got your air pressure set too high, um, what it's trying to do is the horns are there to squeeze that fan from being round, to squeeze it and push it too tall. If you get too much air pressure, sometimes it can shrink that fan. 
um, sometimes you're blowing all the solvent out of it or the water out of it before it gets to the panel and it doesn't wet up. Um, but let us know what the viscosity is. You need to have a viscosity cup in your shop today. Anyway, for the rule 40, 6H should have a viscosity cup. Uh, if you don't have, you should, you should get one. Um, but definitely have uh, an idea when you let us know. If you can send us a quick video, so here's the fan I'm seeing. But the other thing is, if you're gonna check your fan pattern, the length you pull that trigger makes a big difference on what that fan shape looks like. So the biggest thing you can do is when you're pulling that, grab that spray gun, there you go. <clears throat> pull that trigger and just say 1001 and let go of that trigger. If every time you do that, you say 1001 and you let go, every time you shoot a test pattern, you get the same size fan. And now when you check that again a month from now and you pull it and you say 1001, uh, again, with your fully controls fully open. Now, the thing you could see is maybe your fluid knob was turned in a little bit because when they do fluid, they spray test these, then they screw that knob in. They might have screwed it in after they cleaned it a little further than the last one. And okay. so make sure you're at full fluid, full air micrometer open, and you're adjusting at the wall. And uh, make sure you got a proper size fitting on. If you're trying to blow through a Milton fitting or one of those Lincoln fittings, it's got too small of an opening, and now you can't get air through it or air volume through it. Now you're having to add higher air pressure at the wall, and you're cheating your gun down by adjusting that to air micrometer. You could have an air pressure issue that's yeah. causing that or an air volume issue that's causing that. So just check those things. Check it with full open fan, full open fluid. Adjust at the wall. Bring your operating pressure down at your gauge on your gun to operating pressure of Let's say on an X gun, I'd start at 26, you know, and test it there. Uh, um, but if you're still seeing those issues after you've done that, but if you can take pictures that you can send to us, man, that speaks volumes. Yeah. Like a 10 second video pulling the fan, pulling the trigger. <laughs> send it to us, man, that makes our job easier. And Wayne is great about going in and he'll talk to you then um, about, hey, what paint are you using, what viscosity you're shooting, all that stuff, and we go test it in the booth. Um, I'd love it if we didn't have to take every gun back here, but sometimes, quite honestly, it can be something as simple as something you're doing there. You could be shoving an adapter in there for some other paint cup that doesn't let paint come out of it. And if you're restricting your paint fluid flow, you're not going to get the fan that the gun should have if you don't have fluid flow rate coming out. You know, think of the days when we used to not have vents on our cups, or we had vents on our cups because we had a hole in the lid on an aluminum cup. That, uh, when you sprayed with that, if that thing plugged in the top, your fan got smaller. I don't know how people are using a lot of cups that don't have vents in them. If they don't have vents in them, the paint can shrink in that fan and you can get a smaller wet center, you get a little smaller fan. Uh, we'll, you send it to us, we plug it in, we throw an RPS cup on it, and we got perfect spray pad and go, well, I don't see the problem here. I think I might know what it might be. But those are things you gotta look at. Just be honest with us. You know, don't say, hey, I take perfect care of this. And, uh, and the gun's a disaster when we get it. I think um, I think one of the other things too is a lot of guys like to spray test the gun out of the box, but they'll use solvent yeah. or reducer. And it's way too thin. So when they've still got their air pressures up at 28, 29 PSI, what's, what's happening is that it, the, the solvent's basically evaporating before it can even get to a pattern. Right. And so it's, you know, hourglassing or whatever you want to call it. So if you're going to spray test, um, like what we do here, like I said, at least use water because the viscosity of that is very comparable to, you know, a, a, an actual product instead of using well, solvent. It doesn't evaporate so quick. Right. Yeah, the solvent, I, I do, I have heard that on a lot, of, a lot of times on phone calls, guys. I just got the gun, I took it in, I wanted to test it, and the pattern is terrible or whatever it might be, you know. And then you ask them what they're use, what they checked with, and they say, well, I use solvent, you know, some lacquer thinner or whatever it might be. You can't use that because it's too thin. And it evaporates right away. The, you know, like I said, put some water in it. That'll, but that'll if you use water, too. also you may have to run your air pressure lower. Yep. You know, that's a thin viscosity. You're looking at about nine seconds. But it's way it's got more viscosity than solvent. So I mean, sure. it at least shows you how it's working. Yep. So yep. lower your air pressure. Spray that lower. Shoot it at 20, 22 pounds yep. with water, and you're going to see what your fan looks like. Everybody, as much as we think we keep our paint areas clean, you've only got a little dust on the floor. Spray spray that with water on the dust on the floor and shoot a dust pattern. <laughs> it, it shows up, and as you let it evaporate, when the dust settles, um, you, you'll see what the fan looks like. Yeah. Um, that's an easy way to check it, too. Yeah, just don't use solvents or reducers to do yeah. that.
So I kind of want to close this out with, with, uh, with kind of five questions and, and, and two part here. One, I think a good review is always good for everybody. Um, but, but secondarily, we, most of our tech schools, well, all of our tech schools have closed this year. And so um, in addition to not getting to have Skills USA, uh, which is Tony, I know it's your favorite, your favorite time of the year. Um, a lot of these tech instructors are, their kids are, they're logging on and they're watching this with us and they're learning through these schools. So when we think about these new painters, they are our future here. Um, I, five questions for you. What should I do daily? So first question, what should I do daily to my spray guns? Well, at the end of the day, daily, we're going to disassemble that, at least the nozzle set, get the nozzle set out of it. Make sure that those are cleaned and, and dried off. Basically, got to get everything dried off. Don't leave the solvent residue and stuff on them. Um, lubricate those parts that we talked about, you know, the trigger pin, a little bit on the needle, your fluid control threads, uh, that, that spring that's on there. Put it back together. Let it sit. Don't store anything in it. Um, she, it's ready to go the next time you pick it up. Don't soak it. Don't what soak should it. I do? What should I do weekly to my spray guns as a painter? Does it vary or if I'm doing daily, am I okay? I mean, if you did, if you cleaned that spray gun daily. You wouldn't have to and do you it the weekly. It dry, yeah, the weekly thing takes weekly care of itself. Yeah, already taken um, care of. The other option is for, if we tell you to do that every day with the grease, then maybe you'll do it weekly. Um, and if you did it weekly for that reason, that would be better than you're doing today yeah. by a long shot. But really, if you take care of it properly, there is no weekly or monthly. There would, yeah, there would be nothing there. There's no issue. Yeah. So then on my monthly, probably the only thing, if I'm, if I'm taking care of my daily the way I should, then on my monthly, just testing my spray pattern, I should do that? You have to make sure when you get a new spray gun, go shoot a test pattern and make a note of what air pressure you're at, yeah. what gun distance, what, uh, what product you use, and what viscosity. If you do that, um, and again, we have a great piece called the SADA, um, care, or, uh, the certificate. Yeah, uh, how would we call it? <laughs> I don't know. Right off, man. I don't even think. think okay, on the wall. Yeah, we've we've got the SADA cert. Your SADA cert on the wall. Yeah. Very awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that SADA cert, though, but really, that thing helps because it's a document place, and for a salesman or for a rep, it's great to have because you can carry that book with you. It's got a slot you can put all these test patterns in, um, stuff. But really, if you're a painter, shoot a test pattern on a white piece of uh, masking paper and keep it. And now use that as your guide. Every month, shoot a test pattern against that and hold it up to it and look and see if they're the same or are they different. Yeah. There's something to look back at instead of in your memory itself, because your memory is not going to be exact. I think it was like that, but was I'm not sure if it was. And if you've got it on paper, then then you know exactly what it looked like when you did it. Yeah, I was trying to pull this out. The side. other thing, I guess, I was going to say, too, as far as like a monthly one, then, then it might be time to also put a little bit of lubrication on that air micrometer seal at that point, you know, something that you're not doing daily, but maybe monthly check that and see if it's, you know, if you've gotten some product back in there and it's gotten dirty or this, the, the grease is gone, you might want to put a little bit more on there. Okay. Something you do daily or weekly, but maybe once a month. And then, and, and then kind of lastly, is there anything that I need to be thinking about yearly? Should I be, thinking a yearly rebuild or just rebuild in accordance to what my spray pattern shows me? Yeah, probably that way more than anything. Um, I mean, a lot of the facilities that I deal with in the repair department are, you know, guys, and even I did that when I was still painting in the shop, I would, I would maybe once a year send it in if I was starting to see some more issues than what I was thinking I was seeing, you know, the pattern issues and stuff. And, and, and if you're, using the gun pretty hard in a year, it may be time, you know, to go a little bit further into it and start looking maybe at a nozzle set replacement and things like that. Especially if you're not real careful with the nozzle set itself through the first 12 months or 11 months, you know? So we keep talking about this mysterious side of cert. <laughs> What's inside of that, it's this page. What's nice is you can put your serial number of the gun sal side authentication label number. So I know which gun I'm checking, was it HVLP or RP? I can put the air pressure, there's a picture of a digital gauge, whether it's, I just put the PSI, or if you're not in the US, somewhere else, maybe the bar, if you want a lot less technical number, you know, than PSI. <laughs> and lastly here is what viscosity am I using? So I can write that down. And you shoot that test pattern. Here we've got a cool tool that whether you're using a, 
HLP or an RP, it gives you a little different gun distance. So you hold that by the horn, move the stick before you pull the trigger, and you pull that trigger, <laughs> and it'll give you a great pattern. Yeah. But if you just measure off, if you honestly, if you do it the same every time, and you measure a six inch gun distance, that's perfect um, to check with. Uh, this comes in the SOTA cert. You can buy just the notepads that have this, so you can get that. They're 25 packs. Or you can buy the whole thing, and it has a nice, uh, bound cover, but ours literally is screwed to the wall, so we because we use it. Yeah. Um, and it uh, with that, you have the option then uh, of holding that remote if you want. If you're going from shop to shop as a tech for a distributor, a paint company, you have that to carry with you. Uh, it's got a place in there with instructions that shows gun cleaning methods. It's got a place you can slide these in after you've sprayed it inside of a of a plastic cover, so you can slide them in and keep that, so that you can check back on that gun later. Um, but really, masking paper, um, we'd love it if you use these, but if you don't, just check it with masking paper and have something to compare to and do it the same each time. And I use those, Kristen, I use those quite a bit too. Like if a gun comes in and it was in here and we did some work on it and um, we sprayed, I spray test it with the water or whatever and it, it looks fine and stuff. And then the customer may get it back and he's, you know, it's still not, doesn't seem to be right for him, you know. And I'll have them send it back in. And I, when I take it in the paint booth and I actually physically spray with the gun with their materials and, and everything, then I can send back, you know, the spray ups that I do on those with what I had for PSI, what my gun distance was, all that stuff. And then I fold those up, I'll put them back and I'll send them actually with the gun. So, you know, so then they can see that, hey, it did, it performed here. So what am I doing wrong or what do I have wrong? You know, and then they start looking at fittings or, you know, stuff like that. So, right. Chasing some stuff down in the booth. So, yeah. Yep. Well, that's uh, definitely, I mean, they're, you know, it's the one thing that a painter invests in usually on their own is they pay for their guns and it's definitely an investment worth keeping. I'm still, you know, I've got guns that are, oh, you know, that were my dad's guns that are, <laughs> that are still working well because he maintained them and cleaned them and, um, I've gotten some lessons from you guys over the years and, and I, I can say if you ever get a chance to get to Spring Valley, Minnesota uh, for any training, I, if this, if not if, but when this thing is all over and if training you get an opportunity, go visit Spring Valley and, and take a look at, at that gun hospital back there and what these guys do and how they work and what makes them different um, than what I would consider salesmen. You guys aren't salesmen, you're painters. I did get a, a text message from Kavadic that says it is official and it's now he has it in recording. Tony, you called him a painter. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> we might have to <laughs> oh, re record this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise to lose the recording when it's over. So, yeah, we should re record it down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thanks for doing it. I it because we're remodeling the basement and I need help painting the wall. <laughs> he's, and he's that kind of painter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you guys have any questions or anybody out there, you can always reach us on the website. You can reach out to SADA. Um, they have fantastic social media that will get you connected straight up to anybody. Um, Kavadic, who we are constantly kind of making fun of, he's like the whipping boy of SADA, um, answers a lot of those social media questions and so does Tony. So if you reach out to them, you're obviously gonna get some of those. Um, but um, they'll be able to help you with anything. And we're gonna uh, check in with you guys later. I know we got a few more things coming up. We got Chris and uh, Kavadic actually will be doing some of their own webinars, is that correct? Well, I, yeah, we, we're just trying to uh, decide if we're gonna do that with camera or without. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah, we got an entire list. So, I mean, for us, right now there's a huge amount of Top or conversation that should have been happening anyway, and it has been is yep. proper hydration and proper breathing equipment. Um, right now, it's kind of hard to get a charcoal mask if you're wearing one. Um, and we do have the AirVision 2000 or AirVision 5000s that are incredible products that keep you safe. Um, the filtration that goes behind that, keeping your air clean, not only um, for breathing, but it gives you breathing air quality for your paint guns too. And you see, when you when you finally see a spray gun that works with a filter that gives you air volume and gives you clean air. Um, your redos drop drastically. So yeah. we're going to talk about some of those subjects coming up. We've got uh, a lot of different topics that we're kicking around. So I, I'm not sure when the next one is. It's is it next I should, week? I, I should know. I typically make that Jason's job, but he had to drop off. He has like the whole schedule memorized, and so I was 
Yeah, so we will we will make announcements. We've got quite a few. Um, going to be they're they're worthwhile. Yeah. Thank you guys for attending and for Kristen for and gonna Jason be, uh, Bartman for doing this. Yeah, it's going to be a, a fantastic rest of the month, and I think this stuff's going to live for a long time. That's why we're putting it all. The, all the replays are going to YouTube, so that once they're up there, they'll be easily searchable and easily found. Well, you guys go start an amazing Good Friday. Have a fantastic Easter weekend. Um, and we will see y'all again uh, later on in the month. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Wayne.